Hello and welcome to chapter two of the OpenStax textbook Microbiology, How We See the Invisible World. Chapter outline. In this chapter, I will go over the properties of light, peering into the invisible world, instruments of microscopy, staining microscopic specimens. Introduction. When we look at a rainbow, its colors span the full spectrum of light that the human eye can detect and differentiate. Each hue represents a different frequency of visible light processed by our eyes and brains and rendered as red, orange, yellow, green, or one of the many other familiar colors that have always been part of the human experience. Like your Roy G. Biv, for example. But only recently have humans developed an understanding of the properties of light that allow us to see images in color. Over the past several centuries, we have learned to manipulate light to peer into previously invisible worlds, those too small or too far away to be seen by the naked eye. Through a microscope, we can examine microbial cells and colonies using various techniques to manipulate color, size, and contrast in ways that help us identify species and diagnose disease. This figure illustrates how we can apply the properties of light to visualize and magnify images. But these stunning micrographs are just two examples of the numerous types of images we are now able to produce with different microscopic technologies. This chapter explores how various types of microscopes manipulate light in order to provide a window into the world of microorganisms. By understanding how various kinds of microscopes work, we can produce highly detailed images of microbes that can be useful for both research and clinical applications. So section one, the properties of light. Learning objectives, identify and define the characteristics of electromagnetic radiation used in microscopy. Explain how lenses are used in microscopy to manipulate visible and ultraviolet light. Visible light consists of electromagnetic waves that behave like other waves, hence many of the properties of light that are relevant to microscopy can be understood in terms of light's behavior as a wave. An important property of light waves is the wavelength, or distance between one peak of a wave and the next peak. The height of each peak, or depth of each trough, is called the amplitude. In contrast, the frequency of the wave is the rate of vibration of the wave or the number of wavelengths within a specified time period. Interactions of light. Light waves interact with materials by being reflected, absorbed, or transmitted. Reflection occurs when a wave bounces off a material. For example, a red piece of cloth may reflect red light to our eyes while absorbing other colors of light. Absorbance occurs when a material captures the energy of a light wave. In the case of glow-in-the-dark plastics, the energy from light can be absorbed and then later re-emitted as another form of phosphorescence. Transmission occurs when a wave travels through a material like light through glass. The process of transmission is called transmittance. When a material allows a large portion of light to be transmitted, it may do so because it is thinner or more transparent, having more transparency and less opacity. This figure illustrates the difference. Clinical focus, part one. Cindy, a 17-year-old counselor at a summer sports camp, scraped her knee playing basketball two weeks ago. At the time, she thought it was only a minor abrasion that would heal like many others before. Instead, the wound began to look like an insect bite and has continued to become increasingly painful and swollen. The camp nurse examines the lesion and observes a large amount of pus oozing from the surface. Concerned that Cindy may have developed a potentially aggressive infection, she swabs the wound to collect a sample from the infection site. Then she cleans out the pus and dresses the wound, instructing Cindy to keep the area clean and to come back the next day. When Cindy leaves, the nurse sends the sample to the closest medical lab to be analyzed under a microscope. What are some things we can learn about these bacteria by looking at them under a microscope? 
Light waves can also interact with each other by interference, creating complex patterns of motion. Dropping two pebbles into a puddle causes the waves on the puddle's surface to interact, creating complex interference patterns. Light waves can interact in the same way. In addition to interfering with each other, light waves can also interact with small objects or openings by bending or scattering. This is called diffraction. Diffraction is larger when the object is smaller relative to the wavelength of the light, the distance between two consecutive peaks of a light wave. Often, when waves diffract in different directions around an obstacle or opening, they will interfere with each other. Lenses and refraction. In the context of microscopy, refraction is perhaps the most important behavior exhibited by light waves. Refraction occurs when light waves change direction as they enter a new medium. Different transparent materials transmit light at different speeds. Thus, light can change speed when passing from one material to another. This change in speed usually also causes a change in direction refraction, with the degree of change dependent on the angle of incoming light. The extent to which a material slows transmission speed relative to empty space is called the refractive index of that material. Large differences between the refractive indices of two materials will result in a large amount of refraction when the light passes from one material to the other. For example, light moves much more slowly through water than through air, so light entering water from air can change direction greatly. We say that the water has a higher refractive index than air. When light crosses a boundary into a material with a higher refractive index, its direction turns to be closer to perpendicular to the boundary, more toward a normal to the boundary. This is the principle behind lenses. We can think of a lens as an object with a curved boundary or a collection of prisms that collects all of the light that strikes it and refracts it so that it all meets at a single point called the image point focus. A convex lens can be used to magnify because it can focus at closer range than the human eye, producing a larger image. Concave lenses and mirrors can also be used in microscopes to redirect the light path. This figure shows the focal point the image point when light entering the lens is parallel, and the focal length, the distance to the focal point, for convex and concave lenses. The human eye contains a lens that enables us to see images. This lens focuses the light reflecting off of objects in front of the eye onto the surface of the retina, which is like a screen in the back of the eye. Artificial lenses placed in front of the eye contact lenses, glasses, or microscope lenses, focus light before it is focused, again, by the lens of the eye, manipulating the image that ends up on the retina by making it appear larger. Images are commonly manipulated by controlling the distances between the object, the lens, and the screen, as well as the curvature of the lenses. For example, for a given amount of curvature, when an object is closer to the lens, the focal points are farther from the lens. As a result, it is often necessary to manipulate these distances to create a focused image on a screen. Similarly, more curvature creates image points closer to the lens and a larger image when the image is in focus. This property is often described in terms of the focal distance or distance to the focal point. Electromagnetic spectrum and color. Visible light is just one form of electromagnetic radiation, a type of energy that is all around us. Other forms of EMR include microwaves, x-rays, and radio waves, among others. The different types of EMR fall on the electromagnetic spectrum, which is defined in terms of wavelength and frequency. The spectrum of visible light occupies a relatively small range of frequencies between infrared and ultraviolet light. Whereas wavelength represents the distance between adjacent peaks of a light wave, frequency, in a simplified definition, represents the rate of oscillation. Waves with higher frequencies have shorter wavelengths and, therefore, have more oscillations per unit time 
than lower frequency waves. Higher frequency waves also contain more energy than lower frequency waves. This energy is delivered as elementary particles called photons. Higher frequency waves deliver more energetic photons than lower frequency waves. Photons with different energies interact differently with the retina. In the spectrum of visible light, each color corresponds to a particular frequency and wavelength. The lowest frequency of visible light appears as the color red, whereas the highest appears as the color violet. When the retina receives visible light of many different frequencies, we perceive this as white light. However, white light can be separated into its component colors using refraction. If we pass white light through a prism, different colors will be refracted in different directions, creating a rainbow-like spectrum on a screen behind the prism. This separation of colors is called dispersion, and it occurs because, for a given material, the refractive index is different for different frequencies of light. Certain materials can refract non-visible forms of electromagnetic radiation and, in effect, transform them into visible light. Certain fluorescent dyes, for instance, absorb ultraviolet or blue light and then use the energy to emit photons of a different color, giving off light rather than simply vibrating. This occurs because the energy absorption causes electrons to jump to higher energy states, after which they then almost immediately fall back down to their ground states emitting specific amounts of energy as photons. Not all of the energy is emitted in a given photon, so the emitted photons will be of lower energy and thus of lower frequency than the absorbed ones. Thus a dye such as Texas Red may be excited by blue light but emit red light, or a dye such as fluorescent isothiocyanate, FITC, may absorb in invisible high energy ultraviolet light and emit green light. In some materials, the photons may be emitted following a delay after absorption. In this case, the process is called phosphorescence. Glow-in-the-dark plastics work by using phosphorescent material. Magnification, resolution, and contrast. Microscopes magnify images and use the properties of light to create useful images of small objects. Magnification is defined as the ability of a lens to enlarge the image of an object when compared to the real object. For example, a magnification of 10x means that the image appears 10 times the size of the object as viewed with the naked eye. Greater magnification typically improves our ability to see details of small objects, but magnification alone is not sufficient to make the most useful images. It is often useful to enhance the resolution of objects, the ability to tell that two separate points or objects are actually separate. A low resolution image appears fuzzy, whereas a high resolution image appears sharp. Two factors affect resolution. The first is wavelength. Shorter wavelengths will be able to resolve smaller objects. Thus, an electron microscope has a much higher resolution than a light microscope since it uses an electron beam with a very short wavelength as opposed to the long wavelength visible light used by a light microscope. The second factor that affects resolution is numerical aperture, which is a measure of a lens's ability to gather light. The higher the numerical aperture, the better the resolution. Even when a microscope has high resolution, it can be difficult to distinguish small structures in many specimens because microorganisms are relatively transparent. It is often necessary to increase contrast to detect different structures in a specimen. Various types of microscopes use different features of light or electrons to increase contrast, which is the visible differences between the parts of the specimen. Additionally, dyes that bind to some structures but not others can be used to improve the contrast between images of relatively transparent objects. And that brings us to the end of part one. Join me next time for part two, peering into the invisible world. Until then.